This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Well, aloha. How you doing? Gordo the Tech Star here. Welcome to another exciting episode of Hibachi Talk. Hibachi Talks, the world listens. That's our new tagline. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew, the security guy is here with us today. Hey, what's uh, up, it's everybody? Nice, How's it nice to have Bye. you back. The traveling fool is here. So grab yourself a libation, pull up a chair and sit down and join us as we talk about physical security. Not fiscal security, not cybersecurity, fiscal security with Brian Tuscan, who is the senior director as opposed to the junior director mm -hmm. of security for Microsoft. Yes. So this Microsoft, that's a company I've heard of. Yeah, it's a software company up in the Pacific Northwest. You've been around for a little while. And you're the senior guy of security. I, I'm like the, I report to the CSO. Okay. Wow, Chief Security Officer. That's yes. terrific. That's terrific. But you look like one local guy. Yeah, I'm local. Huh? So, so, so where did you go to school? So I, I grew up in Wamanawa, Windward Side. Okay. And I went to Kailua High School. Oh, Kailua. Home of the Kailua, Surf Riders, yeah. Imua, Kailua. Yeah, yeah, right. Wow, so a local boy makes good from Waimanalo. From Waimanalo. Goes to Kailua High School and is the Senior Director of Physical Security for... Oh, he has a, there's a little more there. Yeah, so what else, did you, more. What else did you do here? You, pathway up. Yeah, there's a, a one. So usually the transition to a, a private security firm is usually through law enforcement. Okay. So uh, I spent almost five years with HPD oh. and uh, that was very fond Get memories. Did you tattoo somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's <laughs> covered up. But. Oh, okay. so, oh, wow, so you were HPD. Well, I was nice. HPD, yes. Were you a detective? No, I wasn't a detective, but uh, I worked uh, mainly in the D6, okay. Waikiki okay. unit. Then I got into uh, SSD, the SWAT team. Okay. Uh, really, really good, fond memories. But uh, I was the ATV guy on the beach. So it was a cool job. Oh, man. Nice. That was hard man. to give up. You dreamed about that all those years in Wyoming. I always said, you know what? I got to get this beach job. ATV guy <laughs> on the beach. That's cool. ATV. Awesome. So you're here to apply for the police chief's position, right? Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I, wish, I wish all the candidates the best of luck. I, and I know a couple of them, which is kind Maybe of strange. Maybe we could get some on here. Uh, yeah, actually. Are I, they going to decide today, I think? No, what? I said something in the paper this really? morning. Today's the, uh, this is the last day of testimony or something. I don't yeah, know. well, there's anyway. well, there's seven in the hunt. So, so how'd you get to how'd you get to Redmond? There must have been a from from H from Waikiki to Redmond. Like well, what happened there? It, men and women with H HPD, some of the finest police officers. Yes, professional, mm -hmm. great department. Yep, uh, I know it, many. It was the old cost of living in paradise, and so I took a job with the city of Redmond. Ah. So I was a police officer and detective for eight years in, in Redmond, Washington. And okay, that's behold, where the detective piece came. Yes. And they, re they recruit pretty heavily over here, right? The, they do. Washington State, yeah. Seattle, all of them, right? Yeah, a, lot yeah. of, a lot of locals from HPD lateral up to uh, Pacific Northwest because the academy here, mm -hmm. uh, Kikula good. Makai, right. is, is one of the best accredited academy. And so a lot of people just transition up to the mainland. Uh, and that's unfortunate because we lose some of the best. We, we, we do, but there's a great community there. Do any come big... here? Like from there? <laughs> I think it, I, no, it doesn't work that there's way. No, there's no, <laughs> they don't, they don't <laughs> take any laterals. Yeah. You got you to gotta yeah. start from the beginning wow. here. There's something about the cost of living here that wow. just wow. scares okay, everybody okay. away. So, so, but what possessed you to get into, into um, the police force? In, in, into, in, I, I, I was always interested in law, law enforcement because okay. at Kylo High School I was in the, the Air Force ROTC. Okay. And so serving was, was something I wanted to do and I applied to HPD when I was, got in when I was 23. Okay. But uh, before that I worked in the hotel industry. Oh, oh so you got, you got the whole thing. Yeah. But now, so then you go through, and, we're, and when we get into a little further in the show we're going to talk about artificial intelligence and what's yes. happening in the, in the physical security side. But just tell us a little bit. This is kind of exciting. You're, you're with Microsoft. You've been with them how long now? 17 years. 17 years in the, in the physical security yes. aspects of it. And um, so it has to have changed tremendously over the decades. Well, it has. Well, let's kind of circle back when, oh. I, when I was with HPD. Okay. I was fascinated by computers. Okay. So I was the first. They didn't have any though. They did. They have Wangs. That's <laughs> oh, yeah. really? terminal mainframes. BS sixty five, and okay. they had the, they had the mainframe. They had the mainframe. Really? Which they so, still have, by the way. So I, w I was one of the first to get a laptop, a Tam Tandy. Didn't have a hard drive, dual flo uh, floppy, and we got a form filler, and we wrote a report. So I could write as many reports, so many reports than the the typewriter. Okay. So we had a little hooey. There was about ten of us that got the computers, and then we. Bought a dot matrix printer, put it in. This was the old station in King Street. Oh, the yeah. one all way over. Yes. Yeah. Before yeah. we moved to the new one. Yeah. And we had this little geek club, 
uh, and I, I still remember, there was a more senior officer, and he's just like, what are you using that computer? And I said, this is the future. And I was just a young 20, 23 year old kid, and I said, this is the future. And from that early time on, the power of computing is what really excited me. Mm. So my transition to Redmond, which in their backyard, is Microsoft. Right. So I was a, mostly a detective, city of Redmond, did a lot of cases with the Microsoft Corporation. Mm -hmm. And 17 years ago, you know, I did a really big case. Uh, they offered me a job. They were bringing in law enforcement, uh, retired law enforcement, existing law enforcement, came in and never looked back. Wow. Uh, that's kind of a, that's a cool, so cool they, story. So they kind of took you from the, the same way the, the Correct. Redmond took you from Hawaii, they sort of took you from Redmond. Same thing, same ah, thing. Wow, that's kind of neat. So Good I mean, in 17 years, you obviously like it there. Love it. Yeah. It's a wonderful company. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so I, think it, I think it has legs. How did it start? Because I know when we first met, I mean, I remember the, the SOC was there. We came up right. and saw some of this stuff. SOC, oh, what is that? You, uh, Tell me the what Security Ops Center. Okay, see. Which I think you, you guys built one of the first Correct. ones. They, they had global. So how did how that start What for is you? a SOC? You know, you walked in and you got all these resources, right? Well, how, well, th how did think, it start? Think of in physical security, for those that are not familiar, uh, you, you need some sort of command and control center. So they call it an SLC, Security Operations Center. So about 12 years ago, we configured or rebuilt our life safety control center, which was a standalone center. You see a lot of that here. Mm -hmm. You've got apartment sure. buildings, hotels, where they just have a, their own command center their within the building. security office somewhere or command center or whatever. And no different than Microsoft. We had all around the world these little command centers. So what we did is we consolidated about 15, 15 or 20 of these centers into three. We boiled it down to three operation centers. And the main one was in Redmond, Washington, mm -hmm. ju just outside of Seattle. And by doing that, the consolidation, you needed to be on the same network, mm -hmm. uh, high availability, you know, if s stuff happens, but it gave us redundancy. So if something happened in one center, the other one is hot, it could run, it could take operational control, but it could run the 850 sites we have all over the world. Wow. And, there, and, the, and those operation centers are not in the same country. I mean, you don't Correct. have them all in the U.S. You Correct. distributed them. They were distributed. So we had... One in the U.S., one in the U.K., in Thames Valley, just outside of London, and one in Hyderabad, India. Okay. Yeah, I remember coming up there. We actually did a demo where they did an event in, the, in Redmond Park. I think it was out in the park. I lot, was there. But it was handled from the London. Remember, we, yes. you actually did a complete failure of the Redmond site. Everything right. goes black. All the people left the room, and the team from London handled the entire event. It was amazing. We're doing we're doing that as long as this you was know, a long time ago. Twelve years ago. Yeah, yeah. that was and that I'm gonna say that is well over ten years ago right. when, yeah. when we saw that happening. So that's so think of that technology that they had then. I'm, yeah, I'm just sitting here like okay. getting getting So we're headed motor. to the future. So, so we're heading to the future today, so where, where it's going. So that's where it started. So you've still got the three operations center, they're manned, twenty four by seven. So no, we don't have three. So oh. as technology evolved, okay. the cloud, and we're gonna talk more about yeah. that. You start using more cloud uh, software as a service, infrastructure, right. uh, platform as a service, you don't really need more infrastructure. So okay. we found out, even though we grew, we doubled in size, we didn't need three operation centers. Okay. So we shut down the one in London okay. and just have two. And so the new concept is the VSOC. So the V is for virtual. Okay. And the virtual using cloud services is being able to man an operation center with people plug and play from all over the world. So you could actually be embedded from Hawaii. Oh, or sitting here right now. Exactly. And get plugged into I'm this virtual Correct. command center. So the premise is really an intelligence-driven operational-led system. Okay. And so you use intelligence uh, to be smart about what you do. And so most ops operation centers, you have these uh, controllers that are just operation the operationally managing these controls right. and signals. What we're looking at is um, changing the paradigm and then having machine learning, artificial intelligence take over the millions of signals that come through, make sense out of it. So the, it's a fusion center. So you fuse okay. these experts in this room and you can plug and play from all over the world mm -hmm. to make decisions, effective decisions on crisis management, emergency management. So you're not just doing signal mitigation, you're actually managing Crisis. Okay, so tell me, so explain for our viewers, what's si signal mitigation? So signal mitigation, term. think of for anyone that has to access a building, like Hawaii has a lot of hard keys, yeah. but yeah. there's some folks that put in card keys. We, yeah. So if somebody swipes a card or they pushes a door, that's a signal. Okay. Uh, if you have some sort of low voltage device that triggers something, duress alarms, right. 
with an infrastructure as big as ours, we have, you know, over 20,000 cameras. Yeah, how many doors do, must you have as well? Thousands. Thousands of doors, 20,000 cameras. Thousands. Access control using, well, changing now. Right. So access control, there's the usual players out there. And uh, we, we currently use Linnell. It's a good, it's a good uh, product. But if you really look at where the future is headed, the future is really built off of Active Directory, which right. is, which is a, a you know Microsoft, Microsoft product. base product that yep. we use, and then getting away from card card readers. So you see everybody with their card. Right. We're getting away from cards, but the cards. readers will be different. The readers will be different. Uh, think about using facial recognition. So 3D facial recognition. If you're walking into a building, instead of having to go through a door, instead of going to have to go through a uh, turnstile, it already recognizes you from the edge that this is Gordon Bruce. Right. But then you needed a second uh, authentication factor. Right, that's two-factor authentication. So it could be an app on your phone. It could be some sort of Bluetooth device. Mm -hmm. It could be a fingerprint. Right, so retinal you, scan. Retinal, you, you, all, all of these ways to prove who you're, it's identity management. So what I want to bring here, because you, you, something I think you should point out here is that what I'm hearing you say is, is the physical security piece really needs to be tied to the logical security piece as part of the Active Directory. Absolutely. And yeah. so here's a, I think, and I wonder how many companies out there do not have their physical security systems, I know many, not tied to their Active Directory. And part, part of that is just because of, if you look at the physical security industry, who do they hire? Right. Ex-law enforcement, ex-law enforcement, ex-military, where usually they have a lukewarm relationship with IT. So yeah. I know you're an IT guy. <laughs> We're an IT company. Yeah. We're, we're best of friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're best of friends with IT. I, have, I had and still have a great relationship with HPD. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So, so, you know, so that's, that's still there. Um, and they're a, good tech, they're a good tech consumer yes. and a good Microsoft tech consumer. But so but we're bringing these two things together now. Correct. And then you're going to throw on top of that artificial intelligence. And well, ML? It's, well, machine learning and AI, is, I'm sure Brian will talk to us a bit about things that they're looking at for the future, but the, the identity management's always been this clunky yeah. thing, right? Yeah. So you, you, know, you, you watch the military who brought out a card, right? So they're able to use that card on their card readers and able to use that card as their logical, and that's, that is Active Directory authentication for them from both places, right? Yep. Um, we had the, it came up as an issue originally, as I recall, because someone would get fired or someone would get kicked off the network, but yet their card wouldn't get taken out of the access exactly. control so right. they could still gain access to the facility. And so those those worlds not talking was a real is, problem. Is a real problem. And and that's ADs, where ADs helped us That Active that. Directory piece is really that, that kind of yeah. piece. And I've, uh, one of the things I've been saying now so to a number of my clients is that the Active Directory, although it being managed by the I IT department, mm -hmm. I think it should be controlled by the HR department. You should see the H IT guys go when I say that because you don't know who's in the, in the Active Directory and I can show you today people that are in there that are no longer employed or vice versa, people that are employed that still, are, still aren't in there yet. So especially when you've got a large company. Right. Yeah, there's definitely another trigger. Those paths are, you know, security, net, you know, IT, the, the, your privilege set, and then your HR. I mean, you really shouldn't be allowed to be an employee unless you get an Active Directory identity. That's right. right. You've so got to get an Active Directory. Yeah, all tied all all together because you need to be there. Because we're walking around like, you know, you, I'm walking around with these, mm -hmm. right? You know, different clients are giving me, you know, this one doesn't have yeah, even have you, a picture on it. Yeah, wouldn't you like to this have one, an identity? At least this one has a photo on it. You know, it's got some things going. It allows me to get into certain areas. But um, this is the only one tied to the Active Directory. This one isn't. Right. So, and this one should be. So I'll get them there. Well, you'd like to have a global identity, right? Yeah. That could, could manage itself across multiple infrastructures, right? So that your identity was known, so that it could be referenced or accessed from anyone who wanted to share it the way the military, you know, they download lists of, of authorized credentials. So, you know, once you're a certificate or something. Okay, so let's, we've got a perfect time to pause. Okay. We don't have Angus today. Uh, we'll come back, I'll get a little cryptocurrency update, and then we'll come back and then we're gonna talk, we're gonna dig deeper into this AI and ML. See, I used an acronym so you can explain what it is when I come back. All right. All right, go to the text are. We'll be back in five, well, not five, we'll be back in a minute. Hibachi Talks, the world listens. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? And they told me they were making music.
match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff. MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Aloha, Gordon of the Techs are here. Welcome back to Hibachi Talk. We have Brian Tuscan here from Microsoft, the Senior Director of Security, Physical Security over there. Andrew, the security guy. We're going to get into... Uh, uh, what? I said, hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I got your name wrong. Anyway, we're going to get into <laughs> artificial intelligence, which I have none of, and into uh, machine learning in just a second. But I always do a little uh, cryptocurrency update of the week, that kind of stuff on what's going on. So um, last week we were talking about the fact that China was closing down all the exchange, all of their exchanges oh. and so on and getting out of it. And so it didn't take long. So China's leaving the cryptocurrency exchange business, but they haven't left the mining business because that's where they make all the money. So they're not stupid. I mean, they're still mining. They're still one of the largest miners in the world. But the people that have picked up and where China left off has been Japan and South Korea. Wow. So they literally have just jumped onto it. So that the trauma that thought the, the industry thought was going to happen didn't happen. Now uh, South Korea is the largest miner in the world. Wow. Not North Korea. South it didn't Korea. Take long. Didn't take didn't didn't take long for them to see the advantage of it. Mm. Um, cryptocurrency is still trading at about 1.4 billion dollars right now today. So it's it's a rocky ride, but it's still Still hanging it went, in there. It went from, you know, uh, whatever was, you know, uh, I think it dropped. I saw it down to like 19 bucks maybe late last week, and now it's back up in the, the 20s. So, $19 you know. for... Wait, which one? No, you're uh, talking about your investment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah not... The, no, it's $4,300. Yeah, yeah, Bitcoin's yeah, 43, up about so that. Yeah. So it was... But you had, so maybe you had, it went down to 3500 or something. Yeah, it did. It dropped to, down to yeah. $3,200, and, yeah. then, and, it, and that happened real fast, and then yeah. it creeped its way back up. Yeah, so. so it recovered fine. Yeah, you're just thinking of all the money you made on the one I gave you. Yeah, one on the show. Yeah, the... Yeah, we did yeah. a live transfer. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about um, uh, Microsoft's mm -hmm. uh, physical security and mm -hmm. so on. But let's tell us now, you said it's moving forward now, more into the more um, uh, global cloud, Correct. less physical presence, more mobile, I would think, right. and so on. So what's this, how does this artificial intelligence and machine learning and all that Well, I work? think Brian's going to have a lot more visibility on it than I do, but I mean, it's sort of the buzz of technology industries acro across the spectrum of technology industry today, and, and security's, you know, definitely a player in that game, and retail's taking advantage of it mm -hmm. early on, mm -hmm. uh, but for, for the physical security side, for talk related to access control, related to identity management, um, and people moving, like how many people do you have moving at any one time in your organization? Thousands, I'm well, guessing. Just travelers are going to have I mean. seven to ten thousand. Seven to ten thousand a day. A day. So, seven to ten thousand Microsoft employees who are traveling, traveling a day. So if you so if you think Under about trying to, to keep them safe, right, where they're going, right, is it safe to go there? Is there anything happening there? A flood, a tsunami, you know, whatever, all that kind of stuff to try to keep these people safe that he has to work on. You've got to gather all this intelligence wow. to make good decisions, and a human just can't handle it. So. Well, so what's going to happen in that world? Let, let, let's uh, <laughs> let's do a quick quick history. Back in the 80s, uh, you had mainframe computers, right? right? You literally had to drive to work to do your job because right. they're connected to these terminals. You had the mainframe. And exactly 10 years later, the PC came out. Right. So that's where Microsoft dominated. PC in every home, yeah. every business. 10 years, pretty much to the date, you had web browsing. So right. you, had, uh, you had Google, Chrome dominating. And it's the disruption. So the third disruption was mobile. So you don't right. really need a browser, you just need a mobile phone. Right over here. Yep. So the fourth disruption, well, apps. yes, apps, yeah. apps, fourth disruption is really going to be autonomy, machine learning, artificial intelligence. We're already seeing it now, but it's going, to be, it's going to be the commonplace. So you, you have Watson, you have what Google has, you have Microsoft's Azure. Right. So when, when I talk about machine learning in the physical security space, because you know, we're closely aligned to logical, two mm -hmm. separate groups, but you, you, they're, they're morphing closer and closer together because you have to rely on each other. You have all these edge devices that are vulnerable because they're physical devices. It can be hacked. So we rely on our infrastructure uh, with, with our logical team, the cyber team. But let's get back to where we think artificial intelligence is going to yeah, come right. into play. Think about data. So when you, when you think about data, big data, data is the new currency. It's the new oil. It's, it's the new electricity. Yeah, no the new it. blockchain. The blockchain yes. is nothing but data. It's data. It's all data. 
And so you have all these data points. I mean, even in Hawaii, you have some sort of IP device that is, sure. data is just sitting there. Yep. You throw it into a machine because it could think faster than a human, and then what spits out of that, it's consumable. So what we're looking at for trending analysis, mm -hmm. think about it. If you have thousands of access control points, you really want to focus on the most high-risk areas, right? If it's a cafeteria, people going in and out, you really don't care about that if it's during lunchtime. But if it's an executive area, so using the artificial intelligence, and we're working with a strategic partner, Johnson Controls. Mm -hmm. We've been working with them for at least two years, uh, as they merged with Tyco. That's right. A, a year ago. Yep, Tyco. So now you have the smart them. buildings, and then you have the smart security, all coming together, and we're working on some really amazing solutions in our virtualized uh, security operations center uh, with with Johnson Controls. So what we're trying to do is be the industry recognized leader for where this is going to for go. For the physical security. Physical security. Aspects of what's going on. Yes. And what do you think it means? What's it look like? Will the, will the walls come down? Will, so the, do some, will the doors be open? How, what, what, do you think it, how, what do you think it means? Yes. So yeah. you, most people look at security as protecting the facility. Mm -hmm. You don't want, it's beyond the facility. It's the, it's the env environment. It's uh, the environment, it's us. Correct. And so you could literally bring down certain walls because you, you, you're protecting the environment. Mm -hmm. So as you drive onto the campus, right. you already have a camera view of your face that's going through the AI and machine learning that goes, this person is authorized to be here. Mm -hmm. And so you will have a guard with uh, HoloLens 3D mm -hmm. glasses. The evolution of the 3D glasses, it will get down to about the size of these glasses to even an implant or a contact size. Mm -hmm. And so when you, it helps you become part of the artificial intelligence uh, phenomena. Well, this is kind of robotics as the well. Schema. So we've thrown in, we've thrown in yeah. a little bit of robotics into this and so on. Yes. But what about, okay, there's a lot of people out there that are concerned about, well, wait a minute, now you're watching over everything. I don't want my, I don't want my privacy compromised. Well, so yes, privacy is very important. So, I mean, and that's a big kickback. You know, a lot of people don't want cameras in Waikiki. They don't want right. them in these locations sure. because well, I don't want, it's my, it's my, you're invading my privacy. By the way, they don't, no one has. If they think they've got privacy, they're crazy. But anyway, there's, I still hear it all the time. Well, being, being in Hawaii, you, you, you understand the, the state and the rules of the city, county. We're a global company. So mm. we have to respect all the rules of privacy well, in true. every country. Mm. You know, the EU has high privacy, but, you know, in Asia. So every country has conditions of what we can record or, or and even storage of cloud data, okay. it, mm -hmm. it, it has to be uh, regulated. And so how we use it as a whole for Microsoft, you know, internally, mm -hmm. is, is, is privacy is of, of the highest importance. You must have a boatload and of the, attorneys. Uh, the, thing, the, thing <laughs> about, the thing about security though, like he's talking about, is that it actually, it actually gives you more, it actually guarantees your identity in a lot of ways yes. because we, we know that that wasn't you doing this because you were here, we're, because we know who you were. Right, right. And so that, that identity management piece is really this sort of this threshold for physical security. You know, but the, the I, understanding and, and of... I, I'm, you're singing to the choir here, but I still can't convince a number of people, I still get the pushback, is that you're invading my privacy by mm -hmm. putting in these access controls that are telling me, those, telling people where I where I went. We're going to always have those types because they're up to no good. See? Oh, they're oh, really worried. The they're really do? worried about their behavior. <laughs> Tell that to the CEO. The, the reason you don't like them is <laughs> they're up to no good. <laughs> well, there's a, there's there's a balance, right? You yeah. want to you want to have freedom of movement, right? Especially in uh, academics, sure. because to be uh, creative, you don't you don't want to be locked down. Mm -hmm. So it's a delicate balance. So as a, as a security leader, working with other leaders. Finding that sweet spot, working with uh, your, your your current organization and clients and customers. Yeah, I, I just find it uh, terrific. You know, be able to, to just drive up to a building that may not have a gate, mm -hmm. and then within the seconds that you're coming up, you you go through and you're you're on to the next location where you can go within the, within the campus. Well, or the, the as you drive up, if as long as it knows you and you're right, if you're not, then the gate appears. Then the that's gate, that's because yeah, you need that physical uh, immediately you, out of the ground. You may yeah, like a baller, you may need that physical barrier depending on the the asset, the mm. threat, you know, the threat, the you know, appetite for the asset, but. Um, this this ubiquitous knowing and and people have kind of lost they they forget there's really no privacy expectation at work mm -hmm. right now in your home we're not going to be in your home knowing who you are and what you're doing we'll know who you are maybe we won't know what you're doing 
right? It's not that kind of invasive, but when you go to work, well, you, I kind was, of, you kind of surrender, you know, that. I always unplug Alexa because I'm always afraid she's listening. At home, she's listening. Oh, she is listening. Yeah, I was afraid she's <laughs> listening to what's going on with that minute. So, so um, the machine learning part. Now, what's happening on this machine learning piece? Well, as we have a bunch of data scientists uh, yeah. with our Johnson Control partners uh, in, in Ireland. So we've got about 50 engineers working on a, they call it Tyco as a service. Oh, so oh, it's, wow. it's, it's basically the machine learning arm to take all of these signals. Uh, think of a PSIM. You guys familiar with the PSIM, mm -hmm. which is a physical security information, information management. management. Right. And you, you kind of have this single view platform from, from an operator to, to look at your, your entire operation. You're looking at the whole thing. Right. For us, it's all of this data and signals coming through. How do we intelligently use this data to do our job? So since so this is new territory, yeah. we're just excited because it's a three-year project. So we just we just started this summer. Oh. And wow. so maybe give me back on the show. I can oh, give yeah. you a I, progress like report. Maybe next time you're out for annual update. Yes. Yeah, and the, and the, the cool thing about machine learning is the machines in the gathering of the data and the parsing through the data, they, they actually decide what to do with it. They, ha they learn from the data themselves without you programming them, telling them what to do. Mm. And that's the value of machine learning, right? Because there's, there's just so much power there. And as you said, I can't even imagine from thousands of sites and tens of thousands of people with all that signal, right? It's just noise. Well, the intelligence that's in the cameras, Correct. the intelligence that's in the access controllers. Correct. I mean, it's all data. Right. And oh. being able to pull all that and then from that distill. Yeah. Distill what's, eva what's valuable, what's, what's valuable important, and, and what why. you need to be alerted to. I'm thinking of what happened in, um, in Vegas. You know, mm -hmm. if, if, if you know, we had this uh, machine learning intelligence, there may have been a flag that suitcases keep coming in, but no suitcases going out or any of those kinds of things. It's, sure. it's an anomaly. Anyway, I, got a, I only got one minute left. So, okay. so um, any wor last words before I, we give you autographs to look up? Well, thank you for letting me be on the show and talk uh, about Microsoft and you know our strategic partnership with Johnson Controls. And I really look forward to sharing the best practices that we're building up in the Northwest uh, to Hawaii, because uh, I, I, I love Hawaii. And just stop recruiting our good police officers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, all of our guests get an autograph solo cup. This is number 134 in the series. So you can- Mahalo. You can, yeah, you're, right you're on. Welcome, thank you. And you'll, uh, just thank goodness for you guys help keeping us safe. And I love my Microsoft product. Here. Hey, thank you. Thank oh, you. Yeah, Surf, yeah, Surface yeah. Pro works yeah, like a yeah. champ. Helps help pay your bills. <laughs> anyway, Gordo, the tech star, and the security guy. Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching Hibachi Talk. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. How, How you, you do, do it? it?